सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुली फोर वीक्स आफ्टर दॉर ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स कंसल्टेंट हुक बैक स्टेज टू इंजीनियर दॉज पुशिंग फॉर इवन मोर किलिंग is doing zehan sazi to me lashkar e taiba intelligence operative david colman headly chuckled speaking to his bosses in pakistan using an urdu term for inciting an action you should act like this headly reported tahawur rana telling him and if that happens you should do that and fear nothing except god tahawur had a long list of targets film stars politicians pilgrims to the somnath temple he couldn't wait for more blood to be spilt 11 years after he was convicted by a chicago court for providing assistance to the lashkar-e-taiba cleared of a direct role in facilitating the 2611 attacks tahawur rana finally faces extradition to india legal appeals doubtless lie ahead but the trial could deliver punishment for a perpetrator but it will also illustrate how tenuous justice has been for the victims although headly admitted direct responsibility for the killing of 166 people he received just 35 years in prison in return for snitching to american investigators on his co-conspirators the lashkar commanders headly named though remain out of reach in pakistan the trial of zabiuddin ansari the single indian national involved remains ongoing 13 years after his arrest they using a whale to catch a minnow tahawur's lawyer charles swift had complained during his trial in chicago the twisted story of tahawur's relationship with headley and the lashkar leadership helps one understand how the whales ended up escaping even though they became close friends at the hasan abdul cadet college a boarding school with old fashioned military values founded under military ruler general mohammad ayub khan in 1952 tahawur and headley came from very different worlds the son of the urbane gurdaspur born poet and broadcaster salim gilani and the brilliant but unstable philadelphia socialite alice sherrill headley david headley shared the westernized lifestyle of lahore's elite tahawur a distant relative came from an affluent but conservative landed family the two men often described each other as brothers until 2009 that is when they faced off in the 2611 trial with tahawur accusing headley of repeatedly betraying friends to evade responsibility for his crimes following the 1977 coup in which general mohammad zia ul haq took power sherrill had taken headley back to america The troubled teenager turned to drugs and alcohol twice ending up in prison on narcotics charges and then Headley learned an important lesson the second time he agreed to work as an informant for the drug enforcement agency in the US against Pakistani heroin traffickers in return for a reduced prison sentence Headley learned you could get away with it kind of anyway as Headley struggled through life Tahawur earned a medical degree and began serving as a captain in the Pakistan Army Medical Corps. He married fellow doctor Samraz Rana. The couple later had a daughter Zoya. Following a tour of duty on the Siachen glacier in 1997 though, Tahawur developed pulmonary edema and decided that the military life wasn't for him. He fled Pakistan later securing citizenship of Canada. Facing trial for desertion though, Tahawur could never return to his homeland. Following 9/11, under circumstances which have never been fully explained, leading many to suspect he was conducting intelligence work for the United States, Headley decided to go back to Pakistan. Legal documents filed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation state he joined the Lashkar-e-Taiba, serving under military commander Zakiur Rahman Lakhvi and his deputy Muzammil Bhatt. 
Lakhvi is today serving a prison sentence in Pakistan on terror financing charges, but has never faced a trial for 2611 itself. The operational commander of the 2611 attacks and Headley's mentor, Sajid Mir, was secretly convicted by an anti-terrorism court in Lahore last summer. But neither the charges nor the sentence have ever been made public. For his part, Muzammil, who trained the 2611 killing team, remains a fugitive who has disappeared off the map. Former Pakistan Army officer Major Abdul Rahman Hashim Sayed, known to the plotters as Pasha, has also evaded justice, together with the then-serving Inter-Services Intelligence officer who trained Headley in tradecraft, so far identified only. As Major Iqbal, there's one depressing failure of justice closer home too. The Indian national who participated in the 2611 attacks, Syed Zabiuddin Ansari, was handed over to India in 2012 by Saudi Arabia, but his trial is yet to be completed. The army should be withdrawn from Kashmir and Kashmiris given their rights. Former Simi member Ansari had said on 2611. Speaking to Indian television over an encrypted phone line from the Lashkar's control room in Karachi, the land on which the Babri Masjid stood should be handed over to Muslims and the mosque should be rebuilt. Those words have led to nothing by way of punishment so far. Even though Tahawur's family has protested his innocence, they even say the doctor is an ideologically committed pacifist. FBI investigators discovered he was deeply enmeshed with the plot. Lashkar commanders Sajid Mir and Muzammil, the FBI alleged, suggested Headley used the Hawur's business, First World Immigration, to serve as a cover for his operations in Mumbai. The Hawur, who knew Headley was training with the Lashkar and of his relationship with Major Iqbal, agreed without reservation. Following Headley's fourth visit to Mumbai in the summer of 2008, the FBI alleged he briefed the Hawur about the surveillance he had conducted on targets, including the Taj Mahal Hotel and the Chhatrapati Shivaji train terminus. The Hawur was also told about Headley's work to select a landing site for the attackers. Among other things, the FBI said Major Iqbal had emailed the Hawur to help facilitate the setting up. Of a new first world immigration office in New Delhi to help Headley surveil targets in the Indian capital. From the available evidence, it is clear Tahawur approved of what happened. Tahawur, Headley later claimed, later told him the Indians deserved it. In the course of a September 2009 car ride, which was covertly recorded by the FBI, Tahawur also told Headley the nine attackers who died should be given the Nishan e Haider. Pakistan's highest military award. Tahawur accepted in the course of his trial that he had helped Major Iqbal set up a front business for Headley, but his lawyers claimed he believed he was helping the Inter Services Intelligence Agency conduct espionage in India, not an act of terrorism. Although helping Pakistani intelligence would have been a very significant crime had the Tahawur trial taken place in India. His activities were not illegal in the United States since they were not directed against America. Following 2611, email and intercepted conversations revealed Rana became increasingly enmeshed in another plot to bomb the Highlands Postal, a Copenhagen newspaper which had incensed many Muslims by publishing cartoons many thought were blasphemous. Testimony from Headley, however. Did not show Rana had ever been consulted on decisions to do with the actual planning of 2611. Thus, the Hawur was finally convicted of providing material support to a terrorist group, but not of 2611 charges. That's the gap the trial in India might set right. How will it go? Well, we don't know. Evidence produced by the Hawur, the jury believed. Called into question Headley's claims, his old friend had direct knowledge of the attacks. Among the key issues was that the Hawur visited Mumbai with his wife and daughter in November 2008. Odd thing to do, his lawyers pointed out, for a man alleged to have knowledge a big terrorist attack was imminent. The family even travelled using their real names and visited relatives in Hapur and Meerut. For their part, prosecutors argue. The array's evidence 
to question Tahavur's protestations of innocence. Headley Secretary Maruk Bharuch told the National Investigation Agency that she had been told the immigration office was going to be closed down in July 2008. But the deadline was mysteriously extended to November 15th, allowing Tahavur to complete his visit just before 2611. Was that because he knew exactly when the attack was going to happen? That question will now be settled in court. The extradition of Tahavur, though, at most will represent a meagre kind of compensation. The real story of 2611 remains how terrorists and the nation state which backed them got away with mass killing. I'm Praveen Swami and I'm National Security Editor of The Print. Thank you once again for watching Security Code.